Hello friends, welcome to Joy of Life. So today we are going to have the 11th episode of System Design Fundamentals. So far we have talked about a lot of topics like scaling, API, load balancer, API gateway, SQL, NoSQL, CAP theorem, consistent hashing, caching, so many things we have covered. And today we are going to learn something new. So we are going to learn about service discovery in microservices based architectures. So we are going to start from the scratch. We are going to understand what is the problem it is trying to solve. What is the problem all about? What are the different options that we have? What are the different type of um, service discovery we have? What are the advantages and disadvantages of each one of them? We are going to go through all of them. So I want to take a step back and uh, revisit the diagram that we have created. So this is the architecture diagram that we have created for our small e-commerce website or the book selling website, whatever you call it. So here are a few things to note over here that we have few services like book, search, notification, cart, billing, right? So if you take any microservices architecture, you will find that you have small services which are pretty much independent. They don't depend on each other, but they communicate with each other. And they are very narrowly focused. So if you take books, so books does not care what search is doing or notification is doing or billing is doing. Book focuses on creation, updation, delete and getting the books. It does not depend on any of the other modules, right? It might communicate with them, but it does not depend on them. So if the search goes down, there is not much impact on the book. It might get impacted to a certain extent, but it will not completely go down, right? And that's a big advantage. We can independently deploy them. And uh, since we can independently deploy them, the main reason for that is they are loosely coupled. They don't depend on each other, right? And when they don't depend on each other, we can use different language and it becomes language agnostic. For example, if I want the book module to be in Java, search module to be in Python, notification in .NET, I can do that. I can choose any language they just need to communicate with each other and they communicate generally using messaging or using rest so we have not talked about messaging in this series yet we are going to talk soon for the sake of simplicity let's say that they communicate using rest so since we have so many services and each services can have a number of instances running right so we see over here that books has three instances running at three different servers but in reality there could be like hundreds as well right there is no limit to it since there is a huge number of instances that need to be maintained and monitored so we use some kind of service which help us to do so in our case uh, let's say we are using kubernetes and we have given a configuration that minimum of three containers and maximum of 10 containers is required for this search module it will spin up three of the services in three servers which uh, will have some IP address which will be dynamic in nature. So let's say these are my IP addresses. Kubernetes has done its job. It has spinned up um, three instances and let's say each of my server can handle a total of say 10 RPS. So a maximum of 10 requests can be processed by each one of this server in a given second. So let's say I have a RPS of around 25 or 30 and we have the three machines and it is working as expected, right? So let's say due to some reason this machine is out of um, service, the machine is down. It could be various reasons that um, network failure, hard disk crash, whatever it is, this machine is out, right? We have two machines and Kubernetes knows that we have to maintain a minimum of three machines. So what it will do is it will spin up a new machine, right? Straight away it will spin up a new machine and it will be assigned a whole new IP address. So let's say 23 and 66, right? Something like this will happen. So if my request goes high, again, it will spin up two new machines, right? Let's say I have RPS of 50 now. So what it will do is it will spin up two new machines and it, it might be in completely different uh, location where it spins it up. So two machine has been spent up and they could be in a totally uh, different region in a different data center or it could be in a different geography altogether as well, right? So as the request goes up, it spins up more number of machine as it goes down, it will start killing those machines, right? At, but it will maintain a minimum of three and it will never going to exceed 10. That's what is assured by your uh, deployment manager, right? 
So now what happens is that uh, we saw some problems over here. So let's uh, summarize the problem that we have uh, seen over here. The first thing that we have noticed is that there are dynamic number of um, services that are running. Now for our example, this is three, but in real life, there will be 40, 50, 60, 100. It might vary, right? If you are using a service like YouTube or you're using like Facebook, it's has a huge load we cannot just have four or five instance scattering to all those requests right it will be in hundreds or thousands even right so the problem that we see is that the dynamic number of services are running that is one problem the second problem that we see is that the dynamic network address of the ip address right so that is another problem we cannot uh, we don't know what are the ip addresses right now the client need to send a request to this guy right and the client needs the host and the port in order to make this call how does it know that uh, what is the address we are talking about over here how to reach to them right let's say i have a, a client over here so this machine uh, wants to send a request uh, let's say i'm using amazon and it wanted to send a request over here how does this machine know this ip address what if this machine is down and these four machines are in place how does it know about this ip address right so the third problem is that um, we have this HTTP REST based communication right and uh, to communicate we need the second point so how do we communicate how do we get all those details right another thing that we uh, noticed is the changing location so not only the same data center but it could be a new region as well a new data center as well we don't have a control over it neither we don't want to control that right we wanted to keep it as flexible as possible so that it can grow and scale right why do i put a location constraint when i don't want to put one right another problem could be how do we load balance it right so there are instances that are popping up right there are four or five or six or eight instances running at a given point how do i load balance it? because it's changing the number is dynamic right so we need to figure out a way how do we address this problem so these uh, so these kind of problems are uh, addressed by your discovery services so there could be a client side discovery and a server side discovery so let's uh, talk about uh, the client side discovery first so in client side discovery or the server side discovery the core concept is same we want to make this service discoverable right my client need to know my client need to call this that's all right that's what the problem we have in hand and that's what we are trying to solve over here so let's understand how it will work with a client side discovery first so in a client side discovery what will basically happen is so we'll basically have a registry so registry is um, something where um, you can say that it is one central place where all this information is stored so let's um, try and understand this so as soon as this ma machine is up he is aware that he needs to register himself with the service registry so he sends his information that okay i am running at 10 18 23 40 and let's say uh, it's also running at port um, 5454 so it sends this information to him he receives it and acknowledges and says that okay i know where you are running again let's say another machine starts over here and he also as soon as he um, starts up he sends his information to the registry so let's say this one is running at 8808 and similarly the third machine also spins up so it will also go and register so they are sending their information that they are telling that okay i am basically the search service and i am running at such and such port so all these services will go ahead and do that same so the other services as we saw in the diagram they will also do but they'll say that okay i am not such service i am say book service i am notification service so all this data is stored with this registry over here so this is called a service registry so this uh, registry holds all the information that we need and it is the responsibility of the registry it has to maintain the fresh list so it will occasionally send out a request to all these machines all the machine that is listed with it to see that they are up and running or not so you'll have a endpoint like a health endpoint so it will call the health endpoint in all this machine and if it finds some instance to be unhealthy that means you are not getting a, a 200 let's say you got a 500 response from it there is an internal server error 
So the service registry will ensure that it removes that um, entry from the registry and um, uh, does not send any request to that guy anymore until that machine comes up fine and re-register itself with the service registry again. So yeah, service registry not only holds the information but it also maintains the sanity. So it checks that all the instances are up and running and uh, it will occasionally, let's say every two minutes, it will send out a health check to all these machines to make sure that they are up and running and working as expected. The client will also know about the registry. So let's say this is my client who wants to call the service. So what we will do is he will call the registry and ask, okay, can you tell me what are the uh, IP and port you have for your search module. So all these three will be returned to him. So as it calls and asks for the search service, so let's say all these IPs and ports of these three is returned to him. And uh, he now can make a selection and send the call to the respective post in the port and call the actual API. This we have created for search, so give it a name that it calls the API search and it um, gets the result that it is looking for. So this is how this entire thing works. So each of the client need to know that where is my service running and this table is maintained by the service registry who in turn take care of everything that needs to be done, right? So basically the client participates in the discovery and making the call so that's why it's called a client side discovery but in the server side discovery it's a little different few of the things are same so again if a machine pops up we have our service registry the same thing and um, it goes ahead and register itself with the service registry passing on all the information all the registration happen as is but here the client does not participate so let's say my client is over here so the client basically calls a api gateway the client calls lands over here so let me move all this a little bit this in turn calls your registry gets the information and it uh, makes the appropriate call so he, over here the client doesn't know like what is going on so here client does not participate it is the server who participates and decides which instance to be called so this is the basic difference between a server side discovery and a client side discovery let's take a real life example how it could happen so let's say you wanted to reach me and uh, you called my office so basically the phone will be picked up by a receptionist so you will call my office and the phone will be answered by the receptionist and probably you will tell that you wanted to talk to so and so right so the reception doesn't know my number or any other details. So it will have some company portal or something like that, right? So again, it will have somewhere to look at to get my details, right? So what she'll do is uh, she will uh, contact the registry. So this is, let's say the telephone registry. And uh, probably she found three numbers or four numbers of me, one office number, one home number, and a couple of mobile numbers and the receptionist give it back to you right and now you have phone numbers of me so you thought since it's um, evening time it makes sense to call my mobile so you call my mobile in order to connect to me right it might also happen that after a month um, you tried calling me and i have changed my number you don't have my number so you'll call the reception again to get my new numbers right and then you'll call me again so this is more like a client side discovery so the receptionist has shared all my details with you it is exposed to you right now right on the other hand what the receptionist could have done is um, she could have told you to call back in the morning or if you call during the daytime the same call she has dispatched it to me connected to my mobile so this is more like a server side discovery now the benefit of this approach is you don't know my mobile number but still you are connected so my privacy is safeguarded right so to all the external entities it's not always good to share all your data right so and same for the services we don't want to expose all my services servers ip addresses to the external client right so these two approach has their own benefits and we need to make a right call and we are going to see in more details and understand what are the benefits disadvantages advantages of using the server side and client side registry it's not that uh, client side registry is always bad or server side registry is always good we need to understand and take a right call which one to use based on the scenario that we have 
So with that, let's see the advantages and disadvantages of using both the approaches. Let's capture it here as we discuss. So let's start with the client side discovery. Let's see what are the advantages it um, brings to the table. So one big advantage with client side discovery is that you are getting the registry back right so you have all the information of uh, the services where all it is running you have a full list of ip addresses right so you can make intelligent decision right according to your requirements so in case of um, the example that we have just used so you called uh, the reception and got a bunch of phone numbers right so you know it's the evening time so you will not call my office number though you have received it but you will call my mobile number if you want to reach me right if it is daytime you would have preferred calling me on the office number so you can make intelligent decision based on information that you receive from the registry the second advantage of using client side discovery is since we don't have a load balancer in place so what we can do basically is that the load balancing decision can be application specific such as using hashing or any other technique right so that gives you a quite a lot of flexibility in terms of load balancing. It will not be just a dumb round robin for all the application or all the clients, right? So over here in server side discovery, so the client doesn't know anything, right? So it's only the server. So it doesn't matter what client you're talking about. It's just going to do a round robin thing. Uh, since we have less number of infrastructure pieces over here, so it is less complicated and can be easily handled and managed. So since uh, we don't have a load balancer, we don't have to route the client application or request through a router or a load balancer, right? So it is pretty straightforward and simple. So that is definitely uh, going to be a big advantage. For us. And the fifth one is uh, it avoided that extra step, right? So we are having extra step over here, right? So that increases your uh, turnaround time. Right? Client side discovery results in a quick turnaround time since it does not have any extra step in the middle for routing the request to the server, right? So definitely that's a big plus. On the other hand, it has some disadvantages as well. So it couples the client with the service registry, right? So this client over here, or rather all the client needs to be aware of the service registry, which means the discovery logic has to be implemented in each of the programming language, right? So we talked about a language agnostic thing, right? So all the frameworks and the libraries that we need to create in different languages, if we have multiple languages, then we need to create those uh, libraries for the client and each of the client need to have that library present in order to use the service, right? So definitely your clients are going to become very much complicated, right? The application management gets complicated as the microservice architecture works with diverse technology frameworks and tools. So you are introducing a new library, a new framework. Everything that you introduce has to be compliant with the library and you have to maintain it so that it um, performs as um, required. And another disadvantage you can say over here is that you are first making a call to the service registry and then you are making the actual call once you get the registry information so you have to make two calls so an extra call is required in the client um, side approach now talking about the server side discovery so it has also some pros and cons so let's understand them so the first advantage uh, with the server side is that it does not involve the client right the client is completely out of the picture so the client will just call the api gateway and it will get things done that's a very big advantage because we don't want to expose all our ips and the ports and everything to all the clients right in scenarios we might have external client and we might not do that right in this approach the client knows only about the api gateway does not know about all this so i can safeguard that so that's a big advantage there is an abstraction that is created between the client and server right because of this and since the client does not participate, there is no extra logic or framework or tool that is required, right? So the client only calls the API gateway, it does not need any kind of libraries or framework or anything in order to perform this uh, service discovery. So it makes things pretty straightforward and simple for the client, where the client doesn't have to do anything. And most importantly, with the most of the popular cloud services like Azure, AWS, GCP, we'll get this uh, uh, 
uh, services for free so you don't need to code or do anything it comes out of the box it's available for free with uh, some deployment uh, with uh, most of the premium deployment environments that um, eases things up you don't need to rediscover the wheel so it's pretty much uh, template like things right it will not vary that much you'll have a basic configuration you will do some tuning configuration here and there and you can have it up and running and you'll be using in minutes and definitely here the client makes one call which is a big advantage and everything is taken care of you don't need to make two calls like the client side discovery approach well it does have few disadvantages as well so let's talk about them so it needs to be set up and managed by you unless um, already provided by the deployment environment so it's not that you are always going to get it uh, in some of the cases you might need to configure your own you might not get with everything so it might not be available in all the environment so it could be a problem that you need to set up set it up by yourself and uh, get it working but most of the provider these days has um, api gateway and all uh, in them so you just need to uh, pay as you go so most of the time you don't need to do it but still i'll put it in the disadvantage part i'm not uh, pretty sure that it's provided with all the cloud solution but i'm pretty sure it's provided with uh, azure it's called azure front door so it, every provider has a different name do check it out i'm sure it's there in gcp and uh, aws as well once you're getting your uh, registry information there is a load balancing that uh, needs to be done over here so you can have a load balancer configured or you can leave that to your api gateway so the api gateway is capable of doing a load balancing definitely compared to the client side discovery you need more pieces of um, your infrastructure over here in order to manage the server side discovery so load balancing needs to be implemented and this could vary from scenario to scenario what kind of load balancing you want um, so you need to configure all of them by yourself and uh, definitely over here uh, the client had more control but as i say this is more of a dumb approach the client does not have any control to choose uh, the suitable service instance right it's all left with the server so the client is pretty much dumb over here and everything is left with the server in order to uh, be managed but overall uh, both are heavily used both has their own advantages and disadvantages and uh, and you need to make a judicious call based upon your scenarios that which one fits best what are the advantages and what are the things that you are going to compromise if you're going with either the client side or the server side approach so you need to understand your problem statement well and then choose it in the right way so that it fits your requirement I hope you got the basic concept of uh, what is service discovery why we need it and uh, how to use it right and talking about the implementation part of it so there is a mini project that i have done previously which has 27 episodes and on the very last episode we did configure the last two episodes we created the api gateway using zool and then we did a service discovery using netflix eureka so uh, do go through this episode this episode covers in pretty much details wherein we I have shown the dashboard how the services are registered so you can see over here that we have registered our worker and uh, we have configured it uh, and made the calls as well so do go through this episode I'll leave a link to the description so this will give you a quite a lot uh, understanding about how to use the uh, config different configuration provided by your Eureka and Zool and uh, do go through this course as well if you wanted to try hands-on i'm planning to create a project like this a mini one so this one was pretty big and we had 27 episodes so it is not completed but uh, yeah i plan to complete it sometime and yeah with that i'll end this episode over here so do go through this and uh, do let me know if you want any particular topic to be covered one uh, one big thing that is remaining is the event driven architecture so i'm going to have some episodes on that but before that there are a few other things that i wanted to cover as well so yeah with this uh, i'll end the episode over here do let me know your thoughts and uh, do drop a comment um, if you have any doubts or questions or if, what do you feel about the episode and um, yeah that's all bye bye take care and see you soon again